Well, she didn't like to talk about it. And one time she told me about the Titanic because my husband asked her to. I think she had nightmares when she spoke to people about it, which is understandable. Um, she and her husband were married in, Jan in January and planned to come to the United States. <clears throat> and they had tickets for the Mauritania. And then they heard about the great ship Titanic, so they changed their tickets and came on the Titanic. And um, they were third class passengers. And the night that the ship sank, they had spent the evening in the, the day room of the Titanic for third class passengers, dancing and socializing, having a good time. And they would retire to their cabin, had just gone to bed, and they suddenly felt a jolt and a scraping noise, and the ship rather turned. So her husband got up from the bed and said, I'll go see what has happened. And that's the last she ever saw him. And she lay down and, you know, she was tired from dancing and all, so she lay down and went back to sleep. <clears throat> and a little while later, she heard pounding on her door, and it was some other friends, Finnish friends. And they said, get up, Ellen, get up. Something's happened to the ship. So she got up, grabbed her purse, and ran out with her life jacket, her life vest, <clears throat> ran out and with the other passengers, went up the staircase, but the doors were locked. Now some have said those doors were not locked, but she said absolutely they were. And a ship steward came along and he said, come with me, I'll show you how to get out of here. And he took them up a passageway that was reserved for the personnel of the ship. And when she got on deck, she looked and looked for her husband, but she couldn't find him anywhere. And she was put in lifeboat 15. And uh, she said it was full. Many of them were not. But she said the noise as they rode away from that ship was unbelievable, something she would never, never forget. The sounds of the people in the water and the ship. She said everything broke apart on the ship. The mast fell down and furniture and everything came down. And as they rode away, she was still calling for her husband. She thought perhaps he was there. And the Carpathia picked them up, I think, a little after 7 in the morning. And of course, she had nothing but her nightgown. Someone had given her a coat or something. And even when she was on the Carpathia, she looked for her husband, hoping that he'd been rescued. And she landed in New York. and. Um, she was taken to St. Vincent Charity Hospital, where many of the passengers were taken to the third class. And uh, after a few days, the Red Cross gave her $950, a hat, and some clothes, some shoes, and a suitcase. And uh, the Women's Relief Agency also gave her $125. And then she journeyed on to Manesson, Pennsylvania, which was their destination. And years later, she married my father-in-law, and then they had a son, Gerald, who was my husband. Now, what, what was her mood like when she was telling you this story? Very, very reserved and very um, stoic and very tense. And uh, then she put her hands in her lap and she said, that's all I'll ever tell you, never again. And she never did, and I never asked her. <laughs>